Hey, hey, what's up guys? It's Jordan with Laundromat Resource and I want to tell you how you can buy your first laundromat in the next three videos here. I'm going to go through the three main steps. There's going to be a lot of details, so make sure you're ready to take some notes. This is solid information, no fluff. All right, so let's get into it. If we're looking to buy a laundromat, the first thing we got to do is find a laundromat for sale or find one that we can buy somehow. Now, this is easier said than done sometimes, okay? So I have this philosophy that I want to let you know about, and it, it goes like this. If you're trying to look for any investment, any any purchase really, and especially in an investment in a business, if anybody can do it sitting at home on the couch in their underwear, then you're probably not going to find the best deal doing the same thing that they could do at home in their couch in their underwear. It's a low effort, minimal effort uh, way of looking for a laundromat for sale. So most of us have probably done something similar to this, maybe in your underwear, maybe not in your underwear, but uh, you know, got on the computer and searched something like laundromat for sale near me and looked at what results came up, or you went on Craigslist and you searched laundromats for sale, those types of things. Now, nothing wrong with that. And in fact, I encourage you to do that, but I would just let you know that you are way less likely to find a deal that way, or you're going to have to be way more creative in order to create a deal out of something you find on the internet like that, because anybody can do it. Anybody can find it and it's a low barrier to entry. Okay. So what I want to do in this first video is I want to tell you the three things that are working really well right now in terms of finding a good laundromat for sale for, you know, a decent price. And I personally have used all three of these things. I have an investment uh, fund and we use, we, we go out and buy laundromats and commercial real estate. We use these three things to find deals. And I have a ton of coaching and consulting clients who have used one or more of these three things to find good deals. So I know that these three things are working nationwide across the board. Okay. So the first one is this, I call it the Google secret. Okay. The Google secret. And it starts out like this. You, in fact, you can do this first part at home on the couch in your underwear, if you really want to. And it's going on the computer and searching laundromats for sale near me. All right. Now, now I'm telling you, you should do that. Hang tough. I'm going to tell you where the difference comes in, but basically what you want to do is search laundromats for sale near me. What's going to pop up most likely is one of those business listing sites, like a biz bin, a biz buy sell, something like that. That's going to pop up and that is good. That's fine. So, okay. So we're going to click on those and check out the laundromats that are for sale near you. And you're going to look through those deals. Now you do want to look at those deals. You want to check them out, see what's going on. And you want to look at the numbers, right? And the more you do this, the more familiar you are with, you know, how much laundromats cost versus how much income they're bringing in, you know, those types of relationships, the more likely you are to spot a good deal when it comes your way, something that's an anomaly, something that's like, wow, this doesn't look the same as other deals. Maybe there's something, some opportunity there, right? So definitely do look at those laundromats that pop up on those sites. However, the more important thing that you should be doing is looking for the agent or the broker that's listing those laundromats for sale. And let me tell you why. All right. So I'm an agent slash broker here in Southern California. Well, all of California, really. And when somebody wants to sell their laundromat and they come to me and they say, Hey, Jordan, I want to sell my laundromat. Here's basically the process that happens. Okay. I said, all right, well, let's collect some information about your laundromat. We need some, you know, some basic numbers and, and stuff. And we're going to put together a package of information to share with prospective buyers. Okay. Put together this package of information. Then what I do with that package of information is I'm going to send that package to the people that I already know are likely to buy that deal if it fits what they're looking for. Okay. So I have a list of investors. Now my list happens to be nationwide and it happens to be well over a thousand people big. And so I have a huge investor list all over uh, the country, but you know, most people are going to have a more localized investor list, right? So I'm going to send it to them first and they're going to take a look at it. They're going to get first crack at it. Okay. Now, only if all of those investors pass up on this deal for whatever reason, that's when it's going to end up online so that the underwear couch surfers can find it there and, you know, maybe pick it up. Okay. 
However, what you'll realize is that the best deals are going to get scooped up by that first uh, initial offering to uh, you know an investor list. So all that to say, our goal here is not to wait for them to get online. Our goal is to get on those investor lists of brokers and agents in your area who are either laundromat specific brokers or agents, or maybe they're just small business uh, brokers or agents uh, in your area. Okay. Now we want to get on those investor lists because we want to see the deals early before the underwear couch surfers uh, get to see those deals. Right? So how do we do that? All right. I have a few tips for you on how you can do that. Now, first of all, do the Google secret, search laundromat for sale near me, see who's actively listing those agents and reach out to them, introduce yourself and let them know that you're looking for a laundromat. Now, a couple of things that tips that I have for you that can make it more likely that number one, they'll respond to you. And number two, that you'll actually get on that list. Okay. A couple of tips for you. Number one is you know, brokers. Okay. Let me back up before I give you the tips. Brokers and agents, same like real estate agents. We only get paid when a deal closes. Okay. So we don't want to waste a whole lot of time with people who aren't going to be able to make a decision on a laundromat or who aren't going to be able to close the deal. We want to work with people who, you know, have convinced us that they're going to be able to close the deal. Okay. So in order to do that, here's the couple tips I have for you. Number one is do your research. Okay. Understand the business a little bit, learn a little bit of the lingo, go to laundromatresource.com. There's a ton of free information for you to get started. The laundromat resource podcast is a, is a great place to go. You know, we have a blog there. We have some free eBooks. Uh, there's a whole bunch. There's a, obviously the YouTube channel, and there's a whole bunch of information out there for you where you can learn the basics of this business for free and relatively quickly now. Okay. So you want to know your stuff. Okay. And that's going to communicate to an agent or broker. Okay. This person is at least a little bit serious. They've invested some time and effort into learning the business. Okay. So that's number one, uh, educate yourself. Number two is like I mentioned, brokers don't want to invest a lot of time in tire kickers. Okay. Or people who are wishy-washy are going to change their minds a lot. Okay. So you want to demonstrate that you're decisive. Okay. And one of the ways to demonstrate that you're decisive is to communicate as much as you can, the specifics of what exactly you're looking for. Okay. Maybe it's your budget range, a geographical location that you're looking uh, at, you know, those types of things, the more specific you can get. And obviously if this is your first laundromat, you're not going to really know um, super specific, but the more specific criteria you can give, the more intrigued I am as a broker that, okay, maybe this person is serious because they at least have some idea of what they're looking for. If somebody just says, Hey, I'm looking to buy a laundromat. Well, I mean, are you looking to buy a million dollar laundromat? Or are you trying to get one for free? Or are you trying to, you know, you have $50,000 or a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So where are you at, you know, in terms of that? So try to give some specific criteria. And then number three is trying to demonstrate that you have the ability to close on the deal if you make an offer and it gets accepted. Okay. Now a few different ways that you can do that is number one, you know, let them know if you have some money that you're investing in, kind of give them a ballpark of, Hey, you know what? I have about a hundred thousand dollars, you know, and I plan on financing the rest or whatever, you know, try to give them an idea that you have some capital to work with if you do. And number two, you know, I always recommend speak to a lender and, and speak to a lender early. And specifically, I always recommend talk to a laundromat specific lender because they know the business and, you know, they know what it takes to get somebody into this business and they know which business to get you into. Right. So talk to a lender early. And that way, when you communicate with a broker, you know, you can say, Hey, you know, I, you know, I have this much money to invest. I've talked with this person at this lending company and, you know, I'm looking for this budget of laundromat in this general area. Now, all of a sudden you sound a little more uh, serious to me, you're more likely to get a response and you're more likely to get landed on that, uh, on that email list, investor email list. Okay. All right. So that's the Google secret is you want to try to get on their list. Now, the cool thing, I mean, it's, it's kind of a plus and minus, but one of the cool things about buying a laundromat is that you're not really working with 
usually you're not really working with a one specific agent or broker that represents you as a buyer. Now that can be a bad thing, but it can also be a really good thing in the sense that now you can go out and get on multiple uh, brokers or agents investor list. Okay. So don't limit yourself to just one. It's deal specific. So go get on a bunch of investor lists and get as much deal flow coming your way as possible. And when it comes your way, then you're going to do some analysis, which we'll talk about in the part two of this series. Okay. So that's the Google secret. Number one, search laundromat for sale near me. See who those agents and brokers are that are listing the laundromats and reach out to them, try to get on their investor list. Okay. So that's number one. Number two way of finding a laundromat for sale right now is Something that I call, I mean, it's if, if you're familiar with uh, real estate, uh, it's similar to door knocking, okay? It's when you're cruising around town in your Cadillac or whatever, and you see a laundromat, you know, pull into that parking lot and pop in to that laundromat and see if the owner is there. And if the owner's there, strike up a conversation, introduce yourself. Hey, my name is Jordan. And, you know, I'm looking to buy my first laundromat as an investment. I was just wondering if, you know, you're interested in selling. Hi, my name's Jordan and I'm looking to buy my first laundromat. And I wanted to know if you're interested in selling your laundromat. Um, right. And you can kind of have some conversation, ask them about the business a little bit. Now I will just warn you that sometimes you'll run into, uh, owners, laundromat owners who, uh, get very territorial and just don't like this. And that's totally okay. Just, you know, be respectful and say, Hey, no problem. I just want to know if you were interested, you know, they may think you're a competitor coming to scope them out, or you're trying to build one across the street or something like that. Um, just, you know, back it off and, and you know, no big deal, no harm, no foul. Okay. So just know that could happen. All right. So one of the benefits of this is that you're building a direct relationship with this owner, right? And even if they're not interested in selling, no, number one, if they are interested in selling, you're definitely catching them before the underwear couch surfers catch them and probably even before the brokers uh, catch them, right? And so that's an opportunity for you to create a good deal. Number two, though, is uh, you're building this relationship so that even if they're not ready yet to sell, uh, they're more likely to come to you to you know, when they are ready to sell to see if you're still interested in buying because it's going to save them you know 10% on their brokers or agents commission. So could be a better deal for them, could be a better deal for you. So that's good. Now, I want to give you a bonus tip uh, for this. And one of the things that I do when I drive around is I have a stack of letters in my car and on the envelope, it says, you know, laundromat owner or something like that. And basically though that letter, those letters, uh, say, Hey, my name's Jordan. I'm looking to buy a laundromat, you know, wanted to know if you're interested in selling. If you are, here's my contact information. So now when I go in and I talk to that owner, if they're there, I'll have the conversation, whether they are or they aren't interested yet, I'll leave them that letter. I'll put it in their hands. And now they're more likely to remember me because not only did I have a conversation and start building a relationship with them, but also I gave them something tangible that also has my contact information on it. Okay. And, you know, kind of the perks of this is if the owner's not there, I'll leave that letter with the attendant that's there and say, Hey, can you make sure the owner gets this? And if there's no attendant there either, I can drop that in the mailbox and still, you know, have an opportunity to, you know, have a touch, uh, with that, with that owner. So, uh, the, the letter in addition to popping into the laundromat physically, uh, is, Wait, I've just found it to be a game changer and a level upper uh, in terms of my quote unquote door knocking uh, for laundromats for sale. Now, a bonus tip on the bonus tip is at the end of that letter, one of the things that I always do is I, I add a PS and I say, hey, PS, you know, even if you're not interested in selling, you know, I found this fill in the blank. I found this podcast episode. I found this blog post. I found this YouTube channel. I found, you know, whatever it might be, some 
resource or piece of information or tool. For me, it's easy. I just put laundromat resource stuff in there. You can do that too. If you found something else that you thought might be helpful to an owner, put something else in there and just say, Hey, you know, in case you're not interested in selling, check this out because I thought it might help you, you know, take your business to the next level, you know, cheers or whatever. And one of the things that does is number one, again, that makes you stand out in that owner's mind because now you've given them something really with no expectation of return. So you just did something good, triggers that reciprocity a little bit. So they want to, you know, kind of even the score in a good way uh, at some point. And, you know, just it's a step towards building that relationship. And again, you're more likely to get a call back from that owner when they are ready to sell. Um, and so that I have found to be just really, really good um, in terms of getting callbacks. That little PS when I added that has really uh, taken that letter to the next level. Now, bonus on the bonus on the bonus is if you're interested in doing this technique, I have a free template that you can download. You can go to laundromatresource.com slash join, sign up for the free or the pro, I mean, but even just the free membership uh, over there. And you'll have access to a, just a document, uh, a Word doc or a Google doc with that letter that you can go in there and change however you like it, put your information in, print it off and keep it with you uh, as you go. So that's free um, that you can download off the website and get to it. Okay. So that's the second method. The third method of finding a laundromat for sale is similar to using that same letter, but it's going and uh, mailing that letter. So it's more like a direct mail campaign. So you're mailing that letter to uh, laundromats in the area that you're looking to buy a laundromat. Okay. Now, how do you find those laundromats? Well, as far as I know, there's not any like big list as of yet, something we're working on, but there's not any big list of all the laundromats in uh, America that, you know, you'll have access to. However, what there is, is there is Google and Google maps. And so what I always do is I go to the area that I'm looking at and I'll just type in laundromat in that area, see what pops up and either I'll do this or I'll have a VA do this or a virtual assistant, or I'll hire some teenager who just needs to make some extra cash to do this for me and go in and write down or enter into a spreadsheet, the addresses of all the laundromats in the area that I'm looking. Then I can, you know, mail that letter to all those laundromats and I'm good to go. Okay. And people are having a lot of success. In fact, I've had two different coaching clients who've done this direct mail campaign who got back more responses than they knew what to do with and were looking for ways to kind of basically wholesale the deals because uh, there were more deals that came to them than they even you know could handle. So super effective to do it that way. Obviously it's not as personal of a touch, but as you know, like door knocking, but uh, super effective nonetheless. And especially if you're more of like an introvert or you're just a little bit nervous to go do it, this could be a good entry way to do it and see what pops up. All right. So those are the three ways that I know are working right now to find good laundromat deals, but that's only step one of buying your first laundromat. Okay. So in the next video, in part two, we're going to talk about, okay, once you find a laundromat deal, how do we analyze it and determine the value of that laundromat? This is a crucial step because if you pay too much from the get-go, you're going to find yourself in a hole that's very, very difficult to get out of. And I know that from personal experience, okay, as well as the experience of a lot of consulting clients I've had. So I know that for a fact that that is difficult to do. However, if you buy it correctly the first time and you don't overpay for it, really the sky's the limit limit on, you know, on your investment because the returns with laundromats are so good. If you buy correctly that it's, you'll be able to scale it out if you really want to, and you're going to learn the repeatable processes so that you could do it over and over. So there's a lot of benefits to doing it right the first time. And in the next video, part two, we're going to show you exactly how to do that. All right. All right. We'll see you in the next video. And uh, man, can't wait. I would love to hear your feedback on finding a laundromat. 
for sale. And if there's anything else that I can do to help you figure out how to get that first laundromat and set you on the path to financial freedom, just let me know. Drop a comment down below. All right, guys. All right. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.